And then you need to share your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, golly. Oh, share there, okay. Welcome to our online Vespers service. My name is Rebecca keller Scholl. We gather on, site on Thursday nights to take time for a few different forms of contemplative practice offered by our rotating leadership team. During this time together, we'll listen to some music, engage in spiritual practice, and consider the theme of the evening. We accept that today's technology might not work perfectly and we leaders might make mistakes. If this happens, we invite you to take it as part of the practice of being together. We will do our best, offer what we can and do better next time. 
Let us all take a deep breath together as we begin. Vespers is the traditional monastic evening prayer at sunset, a time for reflecting with gratitude on the day and unwinding into a more contemplative mindset. This is our special time together. So let's take in some deep breaths as we relax and listen to our centering music, which tonight is Lone Wolf by Painted Raven. for the interruption um, that was a different video than we oh, were sorry. expecting that's okay I can um, switch it let me Our lighting the chalice this morning is from Jean M. Rich, uh, Rickard, and 
It's called, We Have a Calling in This World. We have a calling in this world. We are called to honor diversity, to respect differences with dignity, and to challenge those who would forbid it. We are people of a wide path. Let us be wide in affection and go on our own way in peace. Amen. And we light three candles. Our first candle is a candle of joy. May we make time and space for infusions of joy into our daily lives, remembering that joy is a spiritual practice. A candle for the sorrows we carry in our hearts this week. May we share them freely so others may help us shoulder whatever burdens and griefs come our way. And a candle for the world. May we discover the ways in which we are called to offer healing, peace, and justice to all living beings and to the earth itself. We will take a quiet moment with the ringing of this bell or bowl. <laughs> and may we reflect on the gifts in our lives and find comfort in these precious moments. Our reading this evening comes from the Rabbi Isabel de Koninck of the Hillel at Drexel University. And it's called, What Are You Called to Become? Calling is an old idea, she writes. Way back in the 1500s, church reformer Martin Luther talked about a calling a lot. He called it vocation. It has the same root as the word voice. A vocation is a spiritual calling. But a calling differs from a whim, which is fleeting, or a purpose, which is usually something you think about and make a decision about. A calling, on the other hand, is something which emerges from within. A calling utilizes your natural gifts, which often emerge early in our lives. Gifts are more than just talents. They are what make us feel fulfilled and happy. Having a sense of humor or an ability to bring joy to others, an ability to quickly compute numbers or an aptitude for leading others. These are all examples of natural gifts. A calling also involves service to others. Your calling can be thought of as an urge to share your gifts with the world. When you express your gifts for the sake of others, you often experience the joy of being fully alive. A calling creates a flow. What were you doing the last time you experienced such absorption that you lost all sense of time? You were probably doing something that relates to your calling. Consider that as we listen to Ash by Aboran.
I can share it from my screen, Leslie. Hey everyone, welcome back to One of the things that always surprises me is when I talk with a dancer or a musician or an artist, they all seem to understand their calling. They tell me that they must express themselves through their art. It's not a choice. It's something that they have to do. Well, for me, sometimes life is like a snow globe, constantly on the move and shaking. And it's hard to see the image within the snow globe when all that snow is swirling around. But once we put the snow globe down and stop the motion and let the snow settle, the image becomes clear. When we quiet the noise around us, we can open ourselves to our inner world. Let's try to do that now. Make yourself comfortable wherever you are. Take a deep breath in and release. And another deep breath in and relax your body. Try to lift your shoulders up all the way up to your ears now, as high as they'll go, and then just let them drop. We're going to roll our shoulders. So start curling your shoulders in forward. Then raise them up again. When you get to the top, breathe in. Then gently squeeze your shoulder blades together as you roll your shoulders towards your back, down and into a natural position and breathe out when you get to the bottom. We will do this three times. And then on the fourth time, let your shoulder blades stay just slightly drawn together as you lower your shoulders. So let's begin. Curl your shoulders forward. As you lift them up, breathe in. Roll them back and squeeze your shoulder blades. Exhale as you go down. Forward. Up. Back. And down. And again, and this time, 
when you get up to the top and you breathe in and you start to roll your shoulders back, just gently squeeze those shoulder blades and keep them squeezed as you drop your arms. Continue to breathe and lift your chest up, up towards the sky as if there were a string pulling you at the sternum all the way up. Breathe and listen to your body. If there's any discomfort, adjust your posture. Extend your arms down to the sides so that they are straightened. Turn your palms up and lift your arms out to the side with your arms straight and your palms up. With your thumbs pointing backwards, pull slightly at your arms, going backwards. And feel the muscles stretch as you open up your chest. And breathe. Breathe into this posture of vulnerability. Breathe into this receiving stance. Breathe in deeply and know that you are safe. Lower your arms to a comfortable position, but keep your chest up and open. Tilt your head up ever so slightly and imagine that there on the top of your head is a ray of sunshine. The sunshine is warm and it's heating up your head very gently. Feel that warmth spread over your head and wherever that ray of light goes, it releases tension, tightness, any stress you may be carrying in your body. Allow the light to move down over your head, down your face. And as you go, release the muscles. Let your jawbone relax. Make your lips soft and allow your neck to be warmed by that sun. The ray of warm light continues to travel down your shoulders, your arms, your hands, letting any tension flow out through your fingertips. Feel the warmth and relaxation all the way up your arms, back to your shoulders and feel it beginning to warm your chest. Relax into it and breathe.
allow the light and the warmth to spread throughout your chest. Let it fill the entire cavity, let it fill your lungs and be warmed by that sunlight. You have an infinite amount of light. It will not dim, it will not run out. It can go throughout your body. Let this ray of sunshine and light let it light the area around you in your room as it flows out from your chest and you breathe. Let that light that's coming from within you let it stretch out to the walls, fill your room, let that light fill your entire home. This light emanating forth from you, it wants to spread. Connect your light, let it keep going until it lights up the universe around you. There is no end to how far this light expands. Let your light go. Don't worry about what the universe looks like or if it has boundaries. Just let your light from within shine. And in the stillness, with your light shining bright throughout the universe, just listen. There may be a message that becomes clear, but don't force it, just be open. When you are ready, draw yourself back to the present, open your eyes and rejoin us in this moment.
You can practice this exercise and go back to spreading your light and listening. A calling may come or it might not, but be open. Our closing words. In Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor, was writing of his experiences in the camps. He teaches, it did not really matter what we expected from life, but rather what life expected from us. We needed to stop asking about the meaning of life. And instead, to think of ourselves as those who were being questioned by life, daily and hourly. Our answer must consist not in talk or meditation, but in right action and in right conduct. We should consider the act of receiving and responding to the world's questions, to God's questions as our highest calling.
Thank you for coming to Vespers and have a wonderful, peaceful evening. <laughs>